Hi everybody, Richard Tromans here at Artificial Lawyer TV. Um, today we're talking to Dan Broderick, who is the CEO and founder of Black Boiler, which is an automated uh, markup system. Uh, hi Dan, good to have you on the show. Hi Richard, thanks for having me today. No, it's a pleasure. I mean, you know, Artificial Lawyer has been writing about Black Boiler for a while now, and I don't think we've actually ever done a proper product walkthrough. So it's a good opportunity for people to have a look actually at how things work and actually see how it works today. So just before we get into the product walkthrough, which we've already sort of partially loaded up there, uh, Dan, could you just tell us what is Black Boiler? How, how does it just give us a very basic idea of what it is and how it works? Yeah, so Black Boiler is patented technology that learns from how our clients review and mark up contracts to create client specific editing models that can review and mark up previously unseen contracts or previously unseen counterparty revisions to our clients documents. And what this means is that black boiler is not a comparison to standard tool it's not simply giving you an overlay of the text in your contract versus the text in your preferred uh, you know, language in your documents, it's actually learning to edit the way a human would edit because it's being trained on human work product. Gotcha. And it's using natural language processing, uh, clearly, and it's aimed primarily at the corporate legal team. Yeah, Richard, I think <clears throat> that's, that's largely right. Corporate legal, we also like to work with alternative legal service providers. And there are instances when we fit well with, with, with law firms as well, when we can get everybody's kind of incentives aligned to use a technology like Black Boiler, we find opportunities with law firms as well, but primarily aimed at the corporate legal. Okay, makes a lot of sense. All right, let's get straight into uh, the, the walkthrough. <clears throat> so uh, please take it away. Great. Uh, so one of the things about Black Boiler is we were partially funded by the National Science Foundation and under that grant that we received from the National Science Foundation of the United States, we had to talk to over 150 people who review and negotiate a lot of contracts. And there are two common denominators with every person we talk to. Number one <clears throat> is that almost all of our clients review and mark up contracts right inside of an e a Word document. And almost everybody receives their contracts from a card counterparty in an email. So we built Black Boy that works seamlessly with those two tools. So to work with Black Boiler, you need to be able to send an email off to, to, to technology. Each one of our clients has one or multiple email addresses. They send the contracts off and then you can go about your day doing whatever it is you have to do. And Black Boiler is going to review and mark up those contracts for you and send them back to you in just a couple of minutes uh, with them having been reviewed and marked up right in track changes. <clears throat> As I flip over to the application itself, you can see that those three contracts have just been ingested into the system and now Black Boiler is going to review and mark them up and send them back to you. Uh, it's 925 now and when we come back in just a moment, it'll be a few minutes later and we'll see the results. Okay, so uh, I am back in my email inbox and I can see that at 9.29, I received an email back with three contracts that were ready for review. Uh, after Black Boiler is done reviewing the contracts, it will send them back to the user marked up and track changes. Uh, the email will provide a little bit of information about each one of the documents that Black Boiler reviewed and marked up. It gives a coverage score, which is the amount of that document Black Boiler was able to understand and make a determination on about how to treat the language in the document, and a little bit about the suggested number of edits. Coverage score is important because we don't want Black Boiler to be doing first impression type of work. We want Black Boiler to be learning from how our clients have reviewed and marked up language in the past. <clears throat> Attached to each contract or each email is a contract that's been marked up in track changes, just like you would expect to see from uh, an attorney or a junior member of your team who's reviewing and marking up contracts. <clears throat> if you click on the link inside of the email, it will bring you into Black Boiler's editing interface, which is meant to mimic Word. So here we are, we're inside of the contract. I'll blow it up a little bit so it's a little bit easier to see. 
but you can see that these were edits that were just made by Black Boiler at 925. Uh, we can change the author to be whatever, whatever anybody would like it to be. This is a native uh, file that can be edited. Uh, it can be edited right in track changes right inside of the, the document itself. Uh, it's also collaborative editing. So other multiple people can be inside of this document at any time to review and mark it up. When you're inside of the contract itself, you can flip the toggle over here to show that language that Black Boiler did not understand. So Black Boiler keeps in dark text any language that it thinks uh, it has not seen anything like it before. And it keeps in dark text any language that it thinks should be revised, but it couldn't figure out how to make the revision. So it actually keeps that all in dark text. It keeps all of Black Boiler's edits in dark text because Black Boiler wants the user to make sure they look at the suggested revisions that Black Boiler has made and either approves them or rejects them. So all of that can go into a machine learning loop to make the system smarter and smarter. Uh, Black Boiler is the first and only patented technology in automated contract markup. We have several patents in the process of learning how to review and mark up contracts. We also have a patented clause library. <clears throat> Our clause library is a smart clause library. It actually reads the documents, understands the different variables in the documents. So in this, this NDA, you have slots or the variables like receiving party. Black Boiler has read this contract and understands that it's using the word recipient. And then it uses the word recipient in all of the language in the, in the clause library. It fills in recipient. And then if you wanna put language in, it's a one click insertion into the document. Also, <clears throat> all of the um, slots in the language that Black Boiler inserts also uses that identified language so that it reads properly when you're editing. You can go down through make a couple additional revisions to the document. If you want, maybe you want the forum to be New York, New York. And when you're done, you simply export it out. You can export this out to a Word document. You can tie it into another CLM or document management system. Uh, other important thing is when you export, you're telling the system to learn. You're telling the system to get smarter and smarter and to learn from all of the work that the person just did. So you're continuously driving more and more efficiency in the process of contract review and markup. Fantastic, fantastic. <clears throat> now, I guess the, the inevitable question that everyone watching this is gonna ask is, how does the NLP know, uh, inverted commas, um, what to change and how to change it? How, how, is, how has this been trained in? Because yep. there are just so many variables. Right. R Richard, we train it in, one of two ways right now. The first is we get examples from our clients about how they've reviewed and marked up contracts in the past. We get their markups and we put that into a proprietary system that creates these editing models for us. We like to get one to 200 examples of marked up contracts. And by the time we do that, we can get pretty good uh, coverage and pretty good edit performance with Black Boiler. We also can learn from a playbook. Our clients can give us a playbook and we can generate that data for them as well, if necessary. So they can tell us uh, a rule, like we always want the governing law to be Pennsylvania and we can make sure the governing law always comes out as Pennsylvania. We can say things like, I always want an aggregate liability cap in my uh, services agreements and we can make sure there's an aggregate liability cap in the right place in all of their services agreements. Um, and then it, one of the things that we just received uh, some IP on or patent on is the process of generating those models and the editing through a question and answer interface. So a process of uh, actually allowing the user to just go through and say, what do you want the governing law to be? I want it to be New York. And then that generates the, the training model itself. Gotcha. And just to clarify for the audience, th this is primarily aimed at third party paper that's coming in to a corporate legal team and or when they're in the process of drafting themselves. So, yes, our tool works on counterparty paper. It also works on our client's paper when the counterparty has suggested revisions. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay, so but you so you wouldn't use this. You wouldn't use this as a kind of vanilla template scenario. This is this is once you actually get into the back and forth. This is a, that's exactly right. This is used for uh, 
negotiation with the council party. Not sure. Now, I'm uh, just going to wrap it up there because we don't have much time, but just very quickly, last couple of questions. Um, clearly, there's a training aspect to this which sure. connects to a particular client. Um, how does that happen? Do you kind of send a team over to mm-hmm. work through it and they kind of point at their filing cabinets and you go, right? Or is it, is it much, much smoother? And they just say, well, look, here's, here's 100 PDFs of this kind of contract. Zip over to you. <laughs> How, how yeah. does that work? Well, you know, in the in the perfect world, they have a couple hundred Word documents marked up and track changes that they can send to us, and that's what we use. Um, some of our clients have that, some of our clients don't, and so we're we're prepared to work with clients that do have that, and we're prepared to work with clients who don't have that. So if they do have it, <clears throat> that's great. We can get a model running. We got a model running for a top five law firm in under 24 hours because they just had the data and they could give it to us and we said, great, ready to go. Um, but if they don't have it, we can work with them to generate that data for them. So, you know, as we said before, these different different processes, uh, obviously people are at different points in kind of their evolution of getting into a contract management or CLM tools. And we're, we're prepared to work at pe- with people at, at the various stages of that process. Gotcha. And actually, just just because, you know, artificial lawyers has a very global audience, this is primarily for the US or could this be adapted for any markets, depending on if you can get the source documents? Right. So that's a great question. Um, 70% or more of the world's contracts, I believe, are in English. We are primarily focused on English uh, contract negotiation, but there's nothing about our technology that prohibits us from expanding this to other languages. Uh, We have a couple of aspects of our text processing pipeline that are optimized for English, uh, but we can optimize for other languages as well, given if there's the appropriate use case and and the effort is and payoff is there for us to do that. Okay, so it'll work in any type of English. So, you know, American, Canadian, British English. Yeah, the great thing about our tools, we don't come (laughs) pre-trained. We learn. We're learning from how our clients have reviewed and marked up contracts in the past. So if, if you know, you're using uh, the, 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 the British version of the word mobilization with, the, with an S instead of a Z, we're gonna, we're gonna learn to put in the S instead of, instead of the Z. Gotcha, gotcha, it makes sense. Fantastic, and just very last question. Um, if someone is watching this and goes, okay, sounds interesting. How do I get my hands on this? How do you license this? How do they, how do they get it? Yeah, so we look at a couple of factors in licensing. We look at you know uh, types of contracts, volume that you're handling, um, number of people who are going to be in the system, and then we we basically come up with an enterprise license for people. The cost is going to be at or below uh, what it would take to to offshore this work. Gotcha. So if you're going to send this to a low low cost center in in uh, in, the, in India or the Philippines or some other location where there's a lot of outsourcing going, we're going to be at or below that cost. On a per document basis well actually it's worth asking this because a lot of people uh do this and it doesn't necessarily get promoted uh do you have a team of people doing the reviewing as well uh yeah. the, 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 <laughs> who just work incredibly quickly you know? <laughs> yeah no we don't have ours is all technology we are not uh kind of a slick marketing campaign with people on the back end doing doing the work we we mark everything up with with uh with technology and that's why I can get back to you in three or four minutes. Fantastic. Thanks, Dan. It's really interesting. Thank you very much. Well, you know, I look forward to hearing from you soon. Take care. Great. Thanks, Richard.